Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Are you kidding me? That's my fastest one yet. Are we live? <laughs> Don't do that. I was looking stuff up. This is you a- said you're ready. I didn't mean that. You know. Yeah, in fact, you said turn us on. You him haw around. You him haw. I never him haw. You him haw. Or he haw. Him haw. He haws the show. Him haw. <laughs> is that a term that people normally use? Him haw. Is that I, just southern? It. It I say it all southern. the time. You him haw around. I I know exactly what you mean. It means you're procrastinating. Right. It means like you're just dilly dallying. Right. Dilly dally. Northerners say dilly dally. Him haw though. Let me look that up. Because that's gonna drive me insane. Him hawing around. I get what you're. Uh, 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 it's H E M and H A W. The term him haw first appeared 1600s. The word him is an intimidated word of a throat clearing, and the word haw is related to the term ha ha, which <laughs> refers to haughty British accents. Oh really? It means to be uncertain about something. So is it like making fun of making fun of British people if you him haw? Maybe so. This is a racist term. Dilly dally means to waste time through aimless wandering or indecision. I know that, but where where did dilly dallying come from? Dilly dallying. This is the board game snobs podcast. It's a verb. I'm the host, Gabby. This is Jerry. This is Enrique. Thank Enrique you. is also here. Oh yeah. Thank there's, you for coming back. There's a there's know. a phrase my uncles in law use called rat killing. I've heard that. What'd you do today? I oh, just did some rat killing, and it means the same thing as dilly dally or him halt. They didn't do anything. They just kind of fiddle farted around. Piddle farted. <laughs> fiddle faddle. Piddling, ar- but piddling around. Piddling. That that Let's means to urinate piddling. when you're piddling. That's piddling what. around to waste time doing something. It's the same thing as fiddle uh, dilly dally. Dilly dally. The word, the base word dally, came in from Old French hundreds of years ago and meant to chat I- idly. So the dally. So dilly dally. So one is English. Him haw is English. Dilly dally is French. French. Very interesting. Piddle means to piddle you, around, to you, waste time doing something not important and useful. Enrique, do you piddle around? All the time. Which is what? <laughs> <laughs> which is what this list has been. This has been our top 25. Piddle does mean to urinate. And this has been nothing but a waste it's of time. It's interesting. If you piddle, you create a puddle. You true. A piddle puddle. Right. <laughs> that means a small amount of urine on the ground has a piddle settled in and accumulated into one area. An accumulation of urination leading to defecation. <laughs> no breathing. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. This is awful. This is episode two oh one. No, it's not. It's not? No, it's not. What is it? Because 200 is oh, gonna come crap. out. Yeah, you've messed okay. this up. This is like episode two oh five. Okay. I have fr- you know what? We're like tenanting this You're thing. You're awful. When no, you're we're the worst producer. <laughs> we're tenanting <laughs> and back to the future. I can't keep track of when mm. we record. You're the producer. You're supposed to keep us track. I'm like two fisting this thing. I've got, <laughs> I've got Evan Williams in one hand and I got some chicory coffee in the uh, other. This is super weird to be chasing. Well, cheap whiskey I, you with need coffee. after. Okay, so here's the insider story. No, mm. I'm not going to care because I'm not going to go meta. Do, anyway, do meta. Do your meta. Go ahead. Okay, so oh, we dear. recorded. We recorded our top 25. 25 down to number six. Then Jerry had to leave. We're like, okay, we'll record five. Our top five to one later. Then we realized we were at, in episode 198 and 199. Oh crap, 200. We need to do something special. We tried to do something special, Bubba. Thanks, Bubba. You know, we're going to blame this all on Bubba. And he listens. <laughs> he does. And he's going to know he let us down. And he did. And the listeners were dying for, what's Bubba's new top five? Da, 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 da. Clamoring for Clamoring. Bubba. Clamoring. They clamor for Bubba. Instead, they get Enrique. Which is a sad addition. No. You're not a sad addition. You're just mediocre. Uh, I was going to say mediocre. Let's rate You're Enrique. Five. Let's rate Enrique. <laughs> You're a five. No. No, people love you for some reason. So... We did episode 200, and I think it was... 200 was fine. It was not a big deal. It wasn't a 150. We're going to make 300 a big deal. 300 will be balls to the walls. We'll be dead. 
Probably. Nuclear winter will have settled in. Got to avoid that fallout. Get in your house, tape it up, wait 48 hours, and go outside. You're welcome. Thank you. I've been teaching Gabby about how to avoid all the type of survival training that I possess. <laughs> uh, nuclear nuclear yeah, winter. Th- is nuclear winter the same as fallout? Well, no, fallout's an actual thing. It's when all the particles come down. But, but I thought nuclear, nuclear winter, winter was like, like because it looks like it's snowing. No, I think that's actually where it blocks out the sun. Oh. I think yeah. that's bad. That's even darker. It's like fallout, like the game bad. Like yeah. fallout 76 it's bad. Like, it's like, hey, you want to <laughs> see Not fallout this, New Vegas good. It's like, hey, do you want to see the world just all grayed out? Well, we can make that happen with nuclear fallout. Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate. Well, let's hope that doesn't occur. Cour? A cour? I like cour? liqueurs. Favorite like liqueur. <laughs> Amaretto, I used to drink that a lot. There was one we got off of a cruise, and like half the bottle was chocolate. And, and the other half of the bottle, it was a chocolate liqueur, and then a white chocolate liqueur. Ew. And it was excellent in coffee, though. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't just drink it. I like it. Kahlua. Yeah, it was like that, basically. But you put it in coffee. I like a good Pimm's Cup. Pimm's one. Uh, the British listeners will know. I enjoy a good Wimbledon. Uh, oh, I love that tennis match. Is South... Well, you, that's where you drink it at. Pimm's Cup. Is Southern Comfort a liqueur? Or is that just a cheap whiskey? I think it's just a cheap whiskey. That was what... Uh, that was what uh, I think it's along the lines of Hennessy or something no, like Hennessey that. No, Hennessy is is cognac. I think it, look, it may be a cognac as well, Southern Comfort. No, Southern Comfort, because no, Southern Comfort was like cheap stuff. That's what was Janis Joplin used to drink. She was the jazz blues singer. I'm rock trying to look rock. it up as you talk. She, she sang me and Bobby McGee. Naturally fruit flavored whiskey liqueur. Yeah. So it's not, it is not whiskey. It's a whiskey liqueur. So it is a whiskey liqueur. What will it cure you of? Well, I don't know. Janice died. Good taste. It is good. It's not good. Uh, I think it's rather cheap. It is very cheap. Enrique. Yes. We appreciate you coming on to help us and finish up our last five. Anyway, we're recording this before we release 20, our top 20 down to five. So it's rather choppy and keeping this in the right timeline is rather confusing. This podcast is anachronistic. Well, basically, because it's, it's not paradigm. in its right timeline. That's not what that means. An anachronism no, anachron- is something. Anachronism is something that's out of time. Mm, it's something such from as, a different time. Such a, Well, yeah. Like a knight's tale when they're playing We Will Rock You as they're jousting one another. That's anachronistic because it's not in the right timeline. Yeah, but I don't know if I'd use it in that context because it's something. We're not, it's not like out of sorts. I know what you mean. I don't think that's hundred percent. Oh, that's how I always kind of view an, it. An anachronism, which is also a great old RPG. I love that game. Um, it's something like that's from a different time, but I don't know what I mean like it's out of sorts. Like we're out of sorts. We're discombobulated. But I mean, if something is out of time, it is belonging from another time. A great. Cillian Murphy slash Justin Timberlake slash. Oh, that is true. Uh, it was that was that Emma Stone? Uh, no, 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 no. It's the Wild, Wild Olivia Wild. But yeah, Olivia Wild was in, but Emma Stone was too, wasn't she? Out of oh, time really? it was a great show. Yes. Where they have their lives counting down on their arms. Yes. Uh, one time during a private conversation, Bubba told me Ooh. that he thought that Inside Emma Stone was the epitome of. Women. He loves oh, Emma man. Stone. And I was like, Emma Stone is not that attractive. And then I watched a bunch of stuff. I think it was La La Land. Mm-hmm. She was in ba- uh, Superman mm-hmm. and something else. No, she was not in Superman. Yes, she was. With no. Garfield. Emma Stone was in Garfield. With Garfield. Spider Man. What'd I say? Superman? <laughs> you said Spider Man. Oh, it is. Anachronism is something that is out of place in terms of time of or chronology. So that's what I'm thinking. So, so I you, think you're we're both correct. right. You're correct. Yeah. I yeah, think I, we're both right. But I though. think you're more right. Um, well, I'll like take that because that may be the first time and last time you ever say those words. I said you're more right. I didn't say I was right. You're a more right. <laughs> <laughs> we're starting it. a new religion. There's the more Mennonites right. and then there's the more rights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you might have to cut that. That might be a little too short. <laughs> no, that's amazing. That was pretty good, wasn't it? I'm all my joke slap. <laughs> Much like Will Smith, your joke slap. Will you quit talking what? about that? That's what? Uh, it's a month old by the time this releases. <laughs> that will be an anachronism. And I, you know That's my right. stance, how strongly I feel about that. All of that. So I don't even want to voice it on this podcast. That's how strong I feel about okay, it. Okay, okay. But I'm just gonna say, if somebody made fun of your bald head, 
you're talking about. You do all the time. And I hate myself for it. But if somebody else made fun of you, have your I bald ever head, struck you? No, I'm just saying if somebody if somebody made fun As of you. As anything your, other than adorable. If somebody if somebody <laughs> somebody made that's good. If somebody made fun of your bald head, I think I would fight them. If they were of small stature. You know, in the Bible there are some boys that made fun of Elijah's bald head and he seeked bears upon them. <laughs> okay. That's that's I mean, I wiped them out. There you go. They said, Go on up there, you bald head. He's like, Oh snap, you done messed up. <laughs> you done messed up, son. <laughs> All right, this uh, is our top five to one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, so uh, do you want to start us off? Uh, you know what? You got your list there. I also have my list. There. My list is right here. I don't remember which one of us went last on the last podcast. Doesn't matter. Enrique, several you, weeks ago, you feel free to comment on our choices if you think the game is good, bad, or whatnot. Okay. My number five. Let's just let's just do this. Do this thing. Go ahead, sir. Do you not know what your number five is? No, you're pausing. I'm, I'm, for a long I'm, time. I'm trying to pull this thing up. Oh, here. oh, you're trying to look look up. Do you need to know? I can probably know it off the top of my head. I have zero idea what your list could be. I'm actually very excited. I am shaking with anticipation. <laughs> you're quivering. I'm shook. And I have no idea what your list could be. That's the thing. So I I am very interested in knowing what your five through one is because we generally line up pretty well, but I'm very predictable. I think it's because I voice what I like very strongly, and you're kind of more secluded. Well, I'm, I'm just not so strong in my opinions, but when I declare an opinion... It's because I feel, feel when I take a strong stance, because it like you take a strong stance on everything. Everything. I feel strongly about everything. And I'm like, okay, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's a bubble phrase. I mean, you know, da 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 da. But then when I actually do declare my extreme love or hatred for something, that means I really feel strongly about it. Whereas Jerry feels strongly about everything. I can kind of go I, along, roll with the roll with the punches, but then if something strikes me, you better believe it's really struck me. I feel my like, number five. What is it? Royals. That is a very light game, very entry level, but yet I, I you know, I've had such we we've we've talked about Royals often. Royals is a game that to me should be. Stop talking about Ticket to Ride. Stop talking about Carcassonne. Talk about Royals. It's more engaging. It's more interesting. Literally, I don't use that phrase a lot, but literally everyone I've ever taught Royals to loves it and wants to purchase it. I have shipped this game to three different couples that we have played it with. Mm. I have taken it upon myself. We played it. They love it. They're blown away by like, this is different than anything we've ever played. I said, you know what? Where do you live? I'm sending it to you. And it's a very accessible game. And it is an entry level beginner game. And it it it's a dice tower essential. And there's a reason for that. And, it, it, I, and I agree. Like I, Most of Dice Tower Essentials games are are really really solid games and this one uh, this the designer peter haas i literally don't even know anything he, and i don't use that term lightly i literally don't know anything else he's done i'll look him up but yeah i don't think there is anything that he's done uh it's published by arcane wonders and a few others in the past i think but i think arcane wonders handles it now if you enjoy ticket to ride if you enjoy Airlines Europe, it, this is a set collection, area influence game. You collect these cards. As soon as you get enough cards, you can go into these different areas of the country, and it's Europe. You're fighting over these different cities. And this game has an evolution to it. As the game goes on, the game evolves. What you're wanting to do changes. 
but it's very simple. It's not complicated. I freaking love how simplistic. No, 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 no. I changed that. Not simplistic. And I saw Dan Thoreau said this phrase, and I wrote it down. I love Dan Thoreau. It is simple, but not simplistic. Simple rules, but depth comes from the players themselves. So what Spacebiff.com. Spacebiff. Best written reviews about board games, period. And that is this game. It is simple, but it is not simplistic because there is a lot of strategy controlling the right places at the right time. Collecting the cards, knowing when to play them. Oh my God, I love Royals. Uh, just to insert this, uh, that Peter Hawes is also the designer of Francis Drake. Francis Drake is his highest ranked game, and I kick myself for owning and then selling Francis Drake because that is the um, that's the game where you're walking along the boardwalk collecting all the resources that you need and then sending the ships the ships out and and it it is a very fast very very good game it's a big box game a lot of wooden components and things it's got that takedo effect where you can either go far down the map yeah or you can do it step by step yeah Yeah, francis and i remember selling its 2013 game and 2014 is the release date on royal so royals is a very simple game that and nobody talks about it. It's not I'm, on anybody's I, list. It, it, it drives me crazy. It does irritate me. And it is one of those games that it is on sale chronically. Like you, I see this game numerously on on numerously on mi- miniature market, cool stuff Inc. places like that. It's always on sale when they have it. It's a great game if you're looking for something to introduce people to the hobby. You're number five. That's an excellent choice. Enrique, do you remember Royals? Uh, yes. We could be Royals. It, it, it's it's. One of the very few games you got, you guys got me into playing. Yes, it's we been did. A very, very long time. We hooked you with Royals, and that's exactly what it's good at. And you won Royals in a contest and got it picked up at BGG. I did. So it's a well, random, random thing. So great game. My number five. My number five is actually Enrique's number one. Barrage. Barrage. Now Barrage was plagued by a poor Kickstarter that had. I thought that might be your number one, so I'm going to explain that. Warped components and some issues with the company Cranio Games in terms of like supplying the uh, refunding people their money or helping them get replacement components. It was just a, a massive debacle. Debacle, yes. But... Barrage, my number 14, as a reminder. Roy, uh, Royals. Barrage. <laughs> Evan Williams, thank you very much. Uh, Hunter Proof. Barrage is an excellent game. It's finicky, though, because it does require oh God, yeah. you to play in a way that is very confrontational. It works better with more, more people. people. Because it, it, it's more enjoyable. And there, there are some concepts that are hard to grok at the beginning, but once you understand that, a very fascinating Euro game where you are trying to, with a theme that's just so odd, you're trying to collect <laughs> water to generate energy. You're basically building dams. Hydroelectric energy. That's That's the whole thing. And build this engine and worker placement. And it does, from the same designers that did uh, Zulkin with the turning gears, this has this turning wheels where you're putting in your resources and it takes time to get them back. So you have to commit resources to build stuff. Very, very interesting. Um, Highly recommended to all the people who love medium to heavyweight Euros. Barrage, it's a fantastic game by Cranio Games. I believe there's also... A, it's also a soluble. Soluble? It is. And I, I always mean, I, and I have it on my list of things, goals I want to do this year, and I've been accomplishing. I've been on fire this year playing games, even solo. Yeah, since the pandemic stopped. I, you've been <laughs> great. Like, the time that you could have spent playing games, you didn't. But now, like... Now everything's opening it's back up. up. Like, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I have done the same thing. January and December, I played like 13 and 14 games. Like, period. I played 13 or 14. Last March, 48 games. Yeah. Tune in for my top five solos. <laughs> um, that's my next list. That's, that's my a next good one. That'd arbitrary be a good one. list. And uh, yeah, so Barrage is my number five. Barrage is fantastic. It holds water. It does. It does. Like my bladder. 
uh, my bladder requires me to release rather frequently. As I have gotten older, I've had issues with my back, which has caused me to have some issues with incontinence. Uh Uh-oh. Yes. I did not realize that the nerves in your spine can actually affect... So, first hemorrhoids... Now incontinence. Well, so uh, first off, and, and, and when you say incontinence, let me make sure I'm getting. That means you can't like hold things in. You kind of yeah, do a little something a little on yourself. Bit, like you, you piddle, <laughs> a little piddle puddle. Well, so here's the thing, though. <laughs> I am brave and bold, and I am not. I do not have any problems talking about and bringing light to any type of medical issues. Raising I, awareness. I, yes, and you know how I hate that term. <laughs> uh, so for all those middle-aged men who play board games and probably have hurt their back lifting Amazon packages, a little bit of incontinence never hurt anybody. Nothing to be ashamed of. I have found that it's just part of growing older. So, uh, like, you pee yourself? Not often. When you lift a heavy package? Maybe. It's it's a thing. That, that Now, that's not that's stress incontinence. There's just regular... Uh, there's several different types of incontinence. How's your stream? I have a strong stream. Mm. I, I mean, you, yes. I urinate in your bathroom all the a time. Heavy you flow. You hear. You hear. It but sounds I, like old Niagara Falls. I urinate, though, <laughs> quite frequently because you should not... By any means, hold it in. That will See, only that's, weaken your As bladder. a truck driver, I have difficulty in that area because, like, I oftentimes have to hold it in. And it concerns me. Is it, Are you in a safe place that we can talk about your other habits? Because I think we have talked about it in the past where you will take a modium to avoid yes. utilizing yes. public restrooms. Yes. That's very odd and not healthy. Oh, sometimes you got to back that thing up. I because know. I don't want to have to. I don't want to get stuck in traffic and... Doo doo on myself. That's not going to happen. You just are afraid of public bathrooms. It, it can happen. It's very closely almost happened before. Almost. Okay. You know what? I, I, okay. You know what? I've done it. Okay. <laughs> there. I've done it. Who has it? If I, if you prick me, do I not bleed? <laughs> Who hasn't gotten in a tight spot and had no access? Yeah. Now, now you see when you're stuck in a traffic (laughs) jam in the middle of Dallas and you can't do anything. It's awful. (laughs) Absolutely. I don't know. This might be our last episode. (laughs) No, I'll just edit that out. Okay. (laughs) No, no, keep that in there. Because there's a thing, though. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. I had nowhere to go, and I had to go. You had shame in your eyes, though. (laughs) No. What I'm saying is you should be shamed. (laughs) But but I think that it's something something that we all, as we get older... No, it's not that I'm older. It's that I had nowhere to go. Your sphincters weaken. Uh, Hey, my sphincter is strong. And it's a thing. No, it's not. my sphincter is strong. We'll talk about this later. We, we, I, yeah, this might not be the best. Are there time. sphincter exercises you can do? Kegel. Can do I don't Kegel. think men can do. Well, yeah. And I just recently found out why Kegels are a thing because they, they I didn't realize that like the organs can drop in a female. No, they can drop anywhere. Like it's hot. That's why Kegel exercises are very important very even important. for males. And yes. I realize I need to do that myself. You need to. I do Kegel. Fun fact. <laughs> I do Kegel episode uh, uh, Kegel exercises during our episodes. That I hear is, you. Yes, that is hence the stream being strong. <laughs> My Kegel muscles are very much there. So y'all are telling me neither of you have ever had an accident. No. Well, wait a Due minute. Due to not wait. having a bathroom availability. I'm trying to think. I want honesty here. Now, Enrique never leaves his room, so I don't expect him to have suffered well, from are, that. Are we like saying like it's en- just like en- a natural en- thing, or is like something like? I, no, a but all of Enrique's gastrointestinal system is artificial, <laughs> that's so that's not the same. So it's made of PVC. Yes, right? Yeah, PVC. I I when I was working the ambulance, I was trying to think. There was one time where I think I don't recall, but it was pretty close. 
Like I like that's a thing. When I whenever the alarm would go off when we had a fire or, or an ambulance call, the first thing I did was go to the bathroom. Like I ran. Like that's the thing. You you go. All the guys that that, that worked there for any period of time, you went to the bathroom now, even kinda, if you had to. But that's how that's often hard to do. Like you can't just force something to come out that's not ready. But you train yourself. Like I like right now. If if you made the noise, if uh, an alarm went off right now, if your fire alarm went off, I would have to pee. It's like your Pavlov's now, dog. Pings, okay. Okay, I understand that. But also, I had a one time I was also stuck in traffic and I just, yeah, if you, you carry a big enough cup in your truck that sometimes you can take care of business when need be. There are truck drivers and I, you know what? I guess I should have done it. They carry five gallon buckets for such an emergency. Really? Yes. I'm telling you, you get stuck in downtown traffic jam five o'clock and there's a wreck and you're in six lanes of traffic and there's nothing you can do and you have to use the restroom, what are you going to do? You could use that bucket or you could just go in your pants. You, you've got a point there. Truly, you are America's <laughs> heroes. <laughs> Delivering our This goods. is taking a wild turn. I really didn't want this well, podcast I'm, to go into. I'm glad that just because I... So, um, this just went off from her. I said, you know, occasionally, you know... Some incontinence, and the next thing I know, you're just pouring out, like letting everybody know about your weak sphincter. Darn well, this whiskey. Your number four, sir. My number four was your number, Vente Dos. Zaya, Warrior Princess. Really? Legends of a Tokyo Drift System. I love Zaya. Not as much as you do, but it's a great game. What do you like about it? Is it because of the, the sandbox the, what, what, space? I was always kind of concerned about the whole sandbox thing. I love how we just go from <laughs> talking about dumping her and just help this like serious conversation not a serious conversation obviously this is all foolishness i love the fact that in this game you can literally not literally see i have a problem with people that don't understand the term literally you can fly around space and do mining stuff. asteroids fighting if you want to Delivering things, picking up, delivering. Enrique? I'm trying to remember You raised Zaya. your hand? No, 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 I'm trying to remember Zaya. I will remind you of Zaya. That's the <laughs> game that has all you the beautiful this. parts <laughs> and all the spaceships. And I gave an hour-long teach on it and then began to beg you, whatever you do, you have to scan the space before you put out a little hexagon tile because there's a one in, like, 50 chance that you're going to pull a sun out and if you can just jump your ship without blindly scanning you may fly into a sun don't and, just warp into a blind space and you said no i'm not worried about it and right off the bat <laughs> you <laughs> flew into the sun <laughs> and we laughed and laughed and could not contain ourselves until you did it again. <laughs> and we still cannot imagine how poorly, because I didn't realize the expansion had another sun in it, <laughs> that, uh, how poorly that could be. It is a great game because it allows you to not only have all these goofy little miniatures, all the beautiful psychedelic artwork. It is a great game. It's just so fun. Also from 2014, a great year for gaming. Uh, yeah. Uh, designer Cody Miller. Good job, Cody. I hate that name, Cody. Why? I Why when I was in grade Cody? school, there was a there's a kid in school named Cody, and what he was he do super mean and weird too. There's a difference. How dare you but no, Cody he was weird. just weird. But he was also mean to me. And I have just grown to find that I don't know anybody named Cody that I like. It's a weird name when you think about it. Is it short for Dakota? No, it's just Cody. Yeah. It's, it's just, not short for it's, anything. It's just C-O-D-Y, Cody. Yeah. Well, I know a Cody that I'm good friends with, but I haven't talked to him in many, many years. Okay. So you're telling but, him uh, Cody. You're a bad say. friend. Well, I mean, phone works both ways. Uh, let's say Cody, Cody, Cody. It's just not a solid. Is there an actor named Cody? I know no actors. I know many actors named Jerry. I know many singer-songwriters named Enrique. Gabriella is uh your name at least is very feminine. Feminine. Uh, my name's in the Bible. Yeah. See, I'm an angel. So mm. yeah. So like, I don't know any Codys. It's Cody. like a made up fictional name. Cody. I know no Codys. I can't think of a Cody. I know I of right so, off the top so, of my so head. Uh, we're all agree that Cody's an awful name. I think uh, it's just an imaginary name that's just like 
you it don't, just pops up in grade school or like middle school and just like it vanishes. You don't know any s- adult people named Cody. Yeah, hardly. you don't. They just kind of vanish. He made another game in 2016 called Tabarua, rank 3,236. And then he's made another game just this year, Iridia, the paths we dare tread, rank 9,979. Iridia? Uh, it's A-R-Y-D-I-A. C. Uh, yeah, what is it about? Is this a- I have no idea. Okay, we'll have to look at it. So if you're a listener and your name is Cody, please send us an email and tell <laughs> us about yourself. You might be the first Cody we like. But uh, Excellent choice. Yeah, on science. science. That's crazy. a great good, game. Good stuff, it's a sandbox stuff. game. I, we have the expansion, too. I bought the expansion with the base game. So and, it's, and it's got the solo variant, which... You need to play that, too. Seems since you're on like a lot. You need to do it. Just do it. I Love mean, it. if I'm breaking out freaking anachrony, I might as well break out Zaya. Yeah, I want to break out Zaya. Again. Warrior Princess, Legends of a Tokyo Drift System. You're a strong man with a weak sphincter. <laughs> no, I have a strong sphincter. My number four. The sphincter is strong with this one. <laughs> 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 You'll have to force it, Luke. <laughs> um, <laughs> Watch out for those Klingons. <laughs> uh, that's Star Wars and Star Trek. Know, it's a little, little milk Met, there. Uh, you did it. That's okay. It's anachronistic. It's okay. You can do that. You you do you. I did. Um, I do do me. My <laughs> number four. That's so awful. Look, this low barrel this humor has low, to stop. Bro, this stop is it. Low. Up your game. All right. Up your game. My number four. Modern art. Modern art. Modern art is the best bidding game ever, in my opinion. I bought this game on a whim. It was in response to my frustration with hearing about Reiner Knizia. I was often told that Reiner Knizia's games were themeless and just particularly just more about a you know, just math i guess it's just it, it, that his games weren't that great they were they were functional i guess you could say modern art the simon edition came out come on I, I purchased it on a whim the best 20 bucks i ever spent a and, whim is a sudden desire or change of mind especially one that is unusual or unexplained Correct, because this is not a game that I would have normally have purchased. Uh, It didn't fit my gaming group at the time. Modern Art, I won't go dive very much into it, but all I will say is if you are a fan of bidding, this is it. This is just distilled every type of bidding, every type of speculation, and just a beautiful game overall. Modern Art is dripping with theme. And it is a game that it is a work of art. And I understand everybody who talks about it and says it's ha- what a quality game it is. It is a game that I firmly believe. I wish they would bring out multiple editions of it. Just repeat the art. Keep the same gameplay. Modern Art is my number four, the quintessential, the quintessential bidding game by Dr. I, Reiner Knitz. I would, I, although I had High Society as probably my only bidding game, I think, in my list. And it is just stripped down bidding. However, it does not cover the variety of styles of bidding that modern art does. And that's the reason I chose it, because modern art is a little... You say it's stripped down, but it does. it's complicated in that way, in that you have blind bidding, you have a singular one-time bidding, you have the back-and-forth bidding like in poker... It, and it is, it's great for learning those different styles. And Enrique, who, do, who does my bidding, is awful yes. at bidding games. Yeah, this just, is the worst game for him ever. Mm-hmm. Enrique doesn't understand a value money. or money. Like or I can do money management. Mo- but most it's, it's Gen money, Z stuff. Millennial. It's, yeah, it's money, money value. Yeah, like what? We, we will never forget the great twenty dollar tip of the pizza that was delivered. Yes, that was that. That was. I think that was just me, just not really thinking. Well, that, no, <laughs> no, nor nor the fifty dollar Walmart fedora from Mexico. <laughs> How do you know about? Because your father told me about that. Where you proudly t- come walking back. I was pressured into that. You were pr- the man was like, "Hey, we'll give you like this," and my friends like, "Gay." He's like, "What?" Enrique bought a $9 fedora that had Walmart tags on it when he was vacationing down in Mexico oh, from somebody who the was... The motherland, right, Enrique? More or less. Uh, when he was... Not more he or got, less. You're from Mexico. He got no, pre- not. Well, your father is. Pretty your pretty. heritage is from Mexico. You hail from... It's called the motherland. From Mexico. Like Chile 
is my motherland. And Ireland is mine. <laughs> I thought you were. I'm, in, I'm uh, 75 percent Irish. See, you know how that's terrible. That is Native American, and I'm one one twenty eight Choctaw. So your motherland is Oklahoma and Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the Choctaws uh, were from over towards the Blue Mountains, like Alabama, Mississippi, that area. Oh, beautiful country, by the way. And they Alabama, got, Mississippi. I think so. That area. I drove really? through. The, I drove through that. I don't area. know. They had mountains there. Beautiful. You can certainly tell why that that, that trail of tears took oh. place from there over there. And I'm always always going. Why did they run them from this area to over here? And when we were visiting Washington D.C., we actually got to stop by and look at the uh, one of the Smithsonian's, the new Native American Museum. There, it was new at the time. But drove back through that country. It's beautiful. And the closer you get to Oklahoma, the less and less beautiful it starts to look. <laughs> I'm like, oh, they just drove them to the worst flatlands that they could. It's just interesting. But yeah. I'll tell you an interesting anecdote. Tell me about this interesting anecdote. Is this not a, not a fun fact? It's not a fun fact. And in An fact, amusing <laughs> antidote. I don't know how amusing it is. If it's, I'm not amused, I'll tell you. It's actually quite, kind of a sad... Oh, I love morbid stuff. Tell me. No, it's it's not even that. Okay, I'll just say it, and then you draw your own deductions. I will. We were driving through... Uh, uh, it was Oklahoma, but it was like the the real reservation part of Oklahoma. Oh, we were on a reservation. Yes. Did we, that give you reservation? We stopped at a store. A come and go. And it was a friend of mine, Stephen, who is half Choctaw, half Mexican. It was myself, who was Chilean, half white. And then it was a full-blood white person. We were checking out. They charged him, let's just say, 50 cents for his soda pop. They charged me 75 cents for the same soda pop. And then the white girl, they charged like $2 for the same soda pop. <laughs> it was so crazy. And we were like... <laughs> That's, and there's a, like, <laughs> there's an explanation for that too, because just, a lot of people don't it realize. Just like the the wider you got, the more you got charged. <laughs> and I, this happens every once in a while. People don't realize is that the Choctaw. I'll I'll speak for the Choctaw Nation type where they have <laughs> go white man. Because I the well I have a card that says I'm part of the nation. I know, but when you go to the um like all their gas stations that are owned by them, mm -hmm. they will give discounts to Choctaw members. And so they have actually have not only a award award program for people who are just regular people who sign up for it, but mm -hmm. they also give discounts to what they call the CDIB members, what's the the certified. Um, I can't remember what that anachrony anacronym anacronym <laughs> means, but basically that that you you're part of the tribe, so uh -huh. they give you a discount, and so they won't ask you. For for any identification they just look at they you just look at you which is crazy <laughs> and so it's like if the people know you're like oh yeah that guy's got his card and you get a discount mm -hmm. which is crazy and then at this other time they're like ah oh, this guy's doesn't have his card. <laughs> so it's like at the whim of whoever is checking you out so that's more than likely what happened yeah. they're like this guy doesn't have a card this no, guy yeah, yeah. might have a discount right this guy does no they are like my buddy steven like he's clearly native american yeah and then I'm like, especially in the summertime when I tan, I'm like pretty dark. Yeah. And then the other girl was just apparently, straight up white. Apparently, only seventy five percent. Like we don't know. Yeah. Uh, we we had a we we had a good laugh over that's that. That's funny. But yeah, that's a common thing in Oklahoma, which is a, a Native American land. It is indeed. It is. Where's the reservations at in I think Oklahoma? They have. I don't. It's. It's broken up. Well, that's why I was questioning because we were traveling. I've traveled all over. I've traveled to Kansas. I've traveled to like South Dakota, and there's reservations somewhere in those areas. And it was one of those areas. I'm trying to think in terms of of reservations in Oklahoma. Like it's mainly like it's broken up amongst the the, the tribes. Now look it up. It real may fast. have been South Dakota. Where it this may occurred. have been because I don't think that we. Let me make sure before I I'm, Oklahoma court rules reservations no longer exist in Oklahoma. Hmm. So, but there's that one show on Hulu that's about those reservation kids, most, reservation dogs. Okay, most of eastern Oklahoma and some counties in central Oklahoma are parts of reservations. So it, it, it's it's there are numerous tribes in the. A matter of fact, the reservations encompass the entire eastern half of the state, some 19 million acres. Home to 1.8 million people, likely an Oklahoma reservation, according to this. But yeah, of all the uh, various tribes, like we live, I live in the Choctaw Nation, which is the tribe that I'm technically a part of. 
and right, but I grew up in the Chickasaw Nation. It's very interesting some of the history about it. it, it you just really have to kind of delve into the various history of each tribe, and they're all very, very interesting. Yeah, the reservation dogs is about kids growing up on a reservation in eastern Oklahoma. East, so that might yeah, be the case probably, because western. No, that's where we're at. Eastern Oklahoma, southeastern Oklahoma. Well, you're thinking like County. Tahlequah. Yeah, right up that way. Yeah, yeah, that's that would be where it's at. Out okay. about Tahlequah, all that. How did we get sidetracked on it? You're number three. I'm Dino-genics. sorry. Dinogenics. Dinosaurs. Dinogenics. You'd like Dinogenics? Has a great solo by the way. I, Freaking! Every time we play Dinogenics, I'm like, "Why don't we play this more?" And it's again one of those games that you know it's it's not that easy to break into. The initial rule book was pretty tough. I think they kind of straightened some of that out upon second right. printing. Richard Keen, the designer, uh, Ninth Haven Games, the publisher. What Dinosaur Island came out, and everybody was all a roar about it. <laughs> not a great game. I didn't. I, it's okay. I'll play it. But Dino Genix is so freaking thematic. And then they come out with the, the second edition or whatever you want to call it. And it fixed a few things. It, the rule book was better. Dino Genix is just so fun. And it is freaking Jurassic Park in a board game. And they can, if you don't play it right, they can break loose and injure things and cause damage. And you're trying to corral them and breed them. I just love this game. And it's one of those games that I regret we don't get to enough just because the board game and so much crap comes out. It is certainly one of the games that the Kickstarter of it for it being a game, very much when you see it, it it is a Kickstarter because it has some premium components. But yet it also suffers from a, the Kickstarter look. Like there's some design, I don't say design flaws, but some artistic choices that could have been, that would have been sussed out if a bigger company had been the one kind of managing it. It is a still a awesome game. Nobody talks about it. And it gra- now, Dinosaur Island and now Dinosaur World is all the rage. Oh, and now the Jurassic Park games on Kickstarter. Which I'm sure is going to, you know, but but and there's going to be a Jurassic Park Legacy by yeah. Funko oh, Pop. That oh, oh, it can oh, be yours God. for a mere hundred plus dollars. No, but Jeez. Dinogenics. If you're looking for an actual worker placement, if you're looking for but the real like Jurassic Park feel type, yeah. And there's a solo to it. Every I'm, time I play this, I just like I would. Why don't we play this more? Never have imagined that this game was on your. <laughs> I just completely. So what was it? Dinogenics was the other one. Oh, and my. The, uh, yeah. My number five Royals, my number four Zaya. Okay. Both, all, so far you've caught me off guard like crazy. Royals didn't catch me off guard. Zaya and this has caught me off guard. My I, number two and one, you should see coming. Okay. My number three, two and one. I all This was hard for me. They all were almost interchangeable. What was for your my number, number four? Uh, my number four was Modern down. Art. Oh, my bad. Okay. And these three games here were all almost practically interchangeable from my number one and it took me a, a long time to kind of really suss them out of what i enjoyed but yokohama is my number three yokohama the designer leaves me now is amazing game not only is it a twist on worker placement Hasashi hayashi Hasashi hayashi a twist on the worker placement area influence engine building resource management the whole nine yards this game scales very well with two players three players four players changes up the board is modular meaning there will be squares that you piece together it's an amazing experience because each game is slightly different because of the way that you have to uh, navigate around the board and all the little twists and turns It is an amazing euro game the artwork is very vibrant and it is one of the games where you always have to have a plan b it's on bga there's a great uh, implementation of it if you're if you're not on board game arena i absolutely love yokohama i am very sad to hear that tmg who is the the publisher of it they're they're going by the wayside or they have so if you see yokohama i highly suggest you pick it up because it is a game that has probably was going to be very hard to get in the upcoming future unless somebody else picks it up i Desperately hope that they do. Yeah, I really, I, I'm sure they will. I, it is, it is a fantastic game. You can get it on Amazon now for 150. Oh no, <laughs> surely not. <laughs> That's what it says. Surely, but surely you can get it on cool stuff or somewhere it can be found. But keep an eye out for Yokohama. 
an amazing Euro game that I have just, as much as I have played it, I have never grown bored of it. Yokohama, my number three. I agree. Great game. My number two was your number 13, Lords of Vegas. Ah, now I anticipated this one because Lords of Vegas is a lot of fun. Well, Lords of Vegas was previously in my top uh, 10 in 2019, it was my number three. It's one of those games that the, you know, it, it's player enjoyment based, whoever you're playing with. And if you're you're just going from casino, casino gambling, it's got negotiation. It's got, it's got, it's just so freaking fun. Uh, it, is a, it is a very fun game where you're utilizing these dice to, to take over these areas and, and to control casinos there was also this element of what god was bringing out about going into other people's casinos and just gambling just throwing the dice and seeing if you can't make some extra cash and i remember the first time we played this game i believe it was me and bubba being all cutthroat over trying to occupy a territory and Gobby just was going into everybody's casinos and would not just stop gambling, gambling and losing money <laughs> horrifically. So the I was each round gambling my life away. Each round was Gobby getting money and it's showing up and, and you could choose which player's casino you're going into. And we were all kicking Gobby out saying no. And there was at one point in the game where I was yelling at Gobby, Don't do it. Don't and he's like, No, we'll let it ride. Can't stop it. <laughs> it was it was hilarious because it was so thematic. Because it is. That's the thing. That's it's, it's one of these games if you allow it it is super thematic you just go crazy you just and you're fighting over spots on the strip you're fighting over casinos you can overtake people's casinos i freaking love this there is one part of the design of lords of vegas that i think is brilliant and it deals with, you know, as 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 you're controlling a casino, you're you're putting your dice in this area and how many pips on each little casino, who controls it. You can just pay money to pick up all the dice and roll them and hope that your dice and your opponent's dice all suss out that you now control that casino. So there's a lot of strategy in Lords of Vegas. Up to a point to where it all comes down with just pick up the dice and roll. And you will sweat. This is one of the few games where you will feel palpable energy when you're getting ready to do something. Because you have gained all this money. You're deciding, okay, I'm going to try to take over this casino. You pay all this money. And then you, even though the odds might be in your favor, you still have to pick up the dice and roll them. And that randomness gives you the feel of of a dice of, of just pushing your luck. It is one of the greatest push your luck <laughs> games of all times. This is one of those games. I guess it, I don't even, we've played it three player. We've played it four player. We've played it. Does it go to five? I have the expansion. I think it does. I think one time we may have played it five player, but we generally have played it four player. And one time we did just play me, Jerry and Enrique, and it was just the same. It is better with more people, obviously fighting over different spots, but it, it's, it's my number two because the highs are extremely high. But it's also one of those games with, I haven't experienced this, but that's why I allow it. This caveat is if you're not with the right group that doesn't really get into it, it's not viticulture where like the same, you, the viticulture is the same game no matter what happens. Lords of Vegas is more along the lines of like Star Wars Rebellion or Game of Thrones. It's like, just depending on the people you're with and how things are going, it can be very, very fun or it could suck. Yeah, it can be a bummer. But for me, I have yet to play a game that sucks. So that's why it is my number two. That's why you always play with me. That's right. That's because and and we know how you handle number twos. <laughs> uh, so. so that's uh yeah. Lords of Vegas, that's a great game. Enrique, you like it. Oh yeah. I no, love thank it. you for that. My number two <laughs> Let me I'll speak. go ahead. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. But I love Lord, Lords of Vegas. But it is it gets more more fun with more people. True that. He just repeats what you say. That's yeah, great. obviously. Okay, yeah. Because I got it, because you guys already said that. Well, yeah, we we, we, said we, we we cover our bases thoroughly. <laughs> yeah. 
So is which it, is the sign of a great so am I podcast. Here just to, make, to be made a fool? No, you're the producer. You're supposed to like when you hold up your phone and you look up stuff for me. That's your job. <laughs> And but people, he rarely does that. He does it occasionally. And but, also a producer would be doing all the things I'm doing he, at this moment. But he's also <laughs> the mascot of the show. Enrique, I need to train you on the computer, the audacity, okay. the boards. I need to train you on the boards. You're not, you don't have to like come up with like a date and time for that. Oh, my God. I don't know if that's Bro. possible. He doesn't even listen to this podcast. <laughs> I guess, how are you going to edit a podcast you don't even listen to? My me? number two. My Riker, Star huh? Trek. My Riker, oh, Star Trek. Okay. My number two. Is that my number one? I'm sorry. It's, I messed it, it up. It's number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's technically number hey, But that's always got me. It he's, does. He's it, does. Say, it gets me two. My I'm number Adam. one is technically number two. Yeah, second in command. Yeah. But he doesn't call Data his number two. That used to mess me up, too, because Data is technically the third. Dude. Okay, I'm going to... I, 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 Go ahead. I want to attempt to guess something here. Guess it. Guess it real good. You're going to guess my number two? I'm going to guess your number two. Okay. And I would have to go through. Uh, you've been through all of those. Yo, you've been through that. That it's shot gonna, up. This gonna, okay. I'm going to just take a guess. I think you're wrong. Go ahead. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm going to take a guess. I want to take a guess that your number one has just fallen and something else has caught your eye and that your number two is now brass. Nope. Okay. My number two is probably. Is it a new game? No. Is it is one of the best? I don't say best. Is 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 it in, from a design outlook? It is a game that has often every time I play it, it grabs my attention and it always just impresses me. And it used to have an app, and the app went off the app store, and I have like a fourteen year old notebook. Oh my God, are you saying Eclipse? Eclipse. Really? I absolutely think. And I do not own the new Kickstarter or the version with all the fanciness. It's $180. What's interesting is what's Eclipse was on your top 10, I think, in 2018. Fell off in 2019. Right. Now it's back at number I, I, when two. It, when it fell off, it was mainly because I we I hadn't played it. We hadn't played it. And then I played it, and then I played it more on the app. And I just every time I play this game, I am so impressed that somebody said, you know what, TI4 and all these other games... Let's do a Euro version of it and let's have it to where it has all the trappings of a a mare trash game, but yet we must make it have this Euro feel where you're managing things. And there's various versions of it where there's a solo version of it. And it is just really, uh, it's amazing. A solo. There's variants of it people come out with where you're out fighting the various little bad guys out there. But I, every time I play this game, I am just. Sorely impressed, and I am. I do not like deluxified versions of games. It is hard for me to say, Yes, I have the drab old version of Eclipse. I'm going to spend 150 or 180 bucks and buy the new version. There's no way I'm going to do that, but I am always tempted to do that. I love that game this much. It is one of those games that I think. Depending on the player count, it is always a different type of game. Even with the same player count, it changes up. It can be very combat heavy sometimes, and sometimes it can't be. Sometimes it's more of a Euro game. Sometimes it's more of a Ameritrash game. The technologies, everything about this game is super appealing. And I often suggested that if, if you ever get a chance to play Eclipse, that you take it. Because it is, once you... It's not a sandbox game. It's not really so much of a 4X game. It's like a 3X game. But it is a Euro version of a, an Ameritrash throwdown space fighting game. I love Eclipse. And I think it is just, it is probably one of the best designed board games of all time. It has one of the best player boards in that once you know what are you doing like that's the whole game yeah and it, it it like every time we break out this game i'm like oh it looks like a lot because it's a it's a big game so you don't play it a whole lot or we don't but when we do i'm like now what's this do with and as soon as i refresh i'm good to go i also really like this game and and what gobby's talking about is on this player board and this game, when it came out, being very, very Euro with the wooden bits, there's just these little wooden discs that you put on your player board. 
And to take an action, all you do is take off the leftmost wooden disc and you place it on that act on an action space, and then you do whatever the action says. And every time you take one of those discs off, it reveals either a number, an expense, something of that nature, very scythe-like, I guess you could say. It is, yeah. And then you improve your ship. Yeah, and at the end of the round, when you get ready for it, here's your player board, and it's like you took so many actions, and it costs you X amount of money, X amount of resources to do this, X, and it's very management-friendly with this board. And that is so ingenious that I'm able to command everything without... With just a simple movement of, I'm taking this disc, and this is my action, and I'm going to build a ship, or I'm going to do this. And once you have played it, everything about it is very intuitive. Even the combat, which is very Euro-trashy, I guess, because you you spend all this time building out your ships and putting various little armaments on them, and then it comes down to just roll the dice and see Mm -hmm. what happens. Everything about this game is amazing. Best of both worlds, I say. It is. It is. It truly is, but it, it leans more towards the Euro Eclipse. My number two, fantastic. Designer Tauko Takokio. Don't know I don't him. Know, I don't know. I, I, I looked up his other games, never heard of them. So this might yeah, be his. This is, this this is, is his, his magnum opus. Magnum opus. Not his Mr. Holland's opus. Mr. Holland's Which I've opus. never watched. It's Me in my neither. wish list. It's the guy that was on Seems sad. What About Bob. And he got eaten by a shark. No, he did not get eaten by the shark. No, he survived. They he thought survived. he was dead. Thought he Mr. Was dead. Holland's opus was I missed the shark. He didn't jump the shark. <laughs> He was he survived and made a great opus and then what would be your killed opus? Bob? What, what about Bob's a opus? great comedy? Gotta be your number two. My number one. My oh, number, number two one. was Lords of Vegas. My number one. Your Riker. Was your number three. What's that? Yokohama. I wondered if it wasn't. Yokohama has screamed up my charts. Board game arena. I have played this game repeatedly. I've played it asynchronously. I've played it live. I've played it in person. I've played it two player. I've played it three player. I've played it four player. And it it's all fantastic. You this game just uh, 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 Wait, peppers you. Peppers. It peppers you. Salt and pepper. With multiple ways to score. You have the in game goals. You have. Uh, the, 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 the the achievements you can score, you have order contracts you can fulfill. You have just so many different ways to score points in this game. And if you play a four player game, even though the board expands, you can get blocked and it really gets tight and you have to really make sure you know where you're going and plan things out and put your assistance in the right spots. And if you don't, it can mess you up. I, this game just, I, I've played this game. I, it may be my third or fourth most played game mm. at this point. I have played the crap out of this game. It's all right. <laughs> It's just uh, I'll, it, the the modular board is nice. I, I, I'm not that big into modular boards, but it is interesting. When, okay, we're going to throw this out. Oh, now all these spaces, the spaces I kind of need to be close ne- next to each other are not. Yeah. I got to clear across the map to pick up a contract. Then I pick up the contract. Well, now I need some this and this and that. Well, now I got to go clear across over here. It's just it has so many different ways to score points. Not just your contracts, not just your achievements, but it has like several buildings that are kind of like area control. If you have the most of those at the end Mm -hmm. of the game, you score this amount of points and that's several different buildings. I just, I have become enamored with this game and the more I play it, the more enamored I have become. Yokohama is my new number one. Viticulture, not even on my list. Yeah, Yokohama's really good. But per my previous comments, sad that she broke up the Beatles. Um, my number one. Brass. Yes. Brass by Martin Wallace. Another game which I play very regularly on the app. Another game for which scales very well if you various editions of it there's brass birmingham and lancaster lancaster does the lancashire what that's what i said does the two-player board lancashire 
I tend to prefer Birmingham, I think. I go back and forth. You do, because last time it was Lancashire. I go back and forth. I go back and forth. <laughs> They're virtually the same thing. They're, they're, it, there's variety. I love the fact, but the new editions of them are absolutely amazing. Some of the best components in terms of a Euro game, in terms of the artwork and just the simplicity of the game, where you just have a hand of cards, play the card, put your business out there. Seems like it would be very basic. But you have to play the other players and how that affects you and how you have to plan ahead and how each game is different depending on the strategies that not only you and your opponents interact, you're in each other's way, but yet you're feeding off each other. You're helping well, each other. Get them to use other. your stuff. It's amazing. It's good. It so is, good. It's a game about codependency. It is. You need this person's That's me and Jerry. stuff. And I love me brass. And Jerry. I wish I could hate it. I wish I could shake it. <laughs> but every time I play it, I fall in love with it. And it upsets me how it is just when I the old version of Brass, which it's over 10 years old now, more actually very much more. uh, It got a lot of respect, but also got a lot of hate. And it was one of those games where it was like the like the wicked stepchild of Martin Wallace. It was like it was. Why was it hated? The artwork in it. I think even Martin Wallace said that when he designed it, he just kind of threw it out there like he didn't really. There, there was a lot of there was a lot of things that was said. He said about it, even about how he. Uh, oh, by the way, he responded to my email. Oh, which was which was I just sent Martin Wallace an email on Geek Mail and just saying, "Hey, I love, love you, love your game, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And I didn't expect anything else. A few days later, I get a response back. Well, thank you, appreciate mm-hmm. it. And very just thank you. And I'm like, so when's he coming on the podcast? I'd love that, Martin. Wallace. I'd lose my mind. I couldn't do it. But yet, Brass was a game that even caught some flack over people saying how it was dry, boring, whatever. This new edition come out on Kickstarter, got blown away. Everybody made me like a million, two it. million dollars. Everybody loved it. And now it's one of those games that it is brand. Do you think they loved it just because of the art change? I think it was not only the art change, some of the rules, it was tightened up a little bit, but it was it made it accessible to more people. And I think the rule book in it on both of those editions are amazing. Roxley did an excellent job on making sure people I don't think people realize how a, a good rule book can really affect the game. Yeah. And if I have a hard time fighting with the rule book, it, it really affects how I feel about the game. You know, like it, how much effort I had to put in to learn it. You have a clear, concise rule book and people who are not normally medium to heavyweight Euro gamers can read a rule book, understand it and play it and enjoy it. How that affects it. That just, I think that just lit the game off. And now it's like ranked incredibly high on BGG. Yeah. So it, it is a well known game. I'm glad to see it's getting the respect that it deserves. Brass is an amazing game. If you like. Birmingham and Lancashire. Yeah, they're both up there. And that's a rarity. Like one's like ranked Brass, number- Birmingham is number three. Yep, number three. Brass, Lancashire is number 20. There you go. That is incredible. Brass Lancashire is like most people say it's basically the original game. Mm-hmm. Brass Birmingham has a, f- a few things, adjustments that make it, I guess, a little bit easier. I don't know what exactly that is. Because to me, Lanc- anyway, yeah, I, I, I love them both myself, but I do lean more towards Birmingham. I like the beer barrels. I do too. So that's my number one. I think Brass won the greatest game. So Yokohama, my number one, Jerry's number one. Brass, Birmingham. So there you go. And I think our list fantastic. is fantastic. If people listen to this and think that we don't know what we're talking about, then obviously they're idiots. If I was going to put, if you were to pick a, not to say dark horse, but a dark horse under appreciated game off of your list, really pronounce it, what would it be? Uh, I think in terms of games that were underappreciated, Barony's not up there very high. And I know we talk a lot about Barony. Uh, Modern Art's up there. I'm sure it's it's well respected. I think Gates of Luoyang, it's a Uwe Rosenberg game. Yeah. So it's it it gets a lot of attention. I'm trying, I'm racking my brain off the various ones that we've talked about. I'm glad that you shouted out all the captains of the golf series yes, the, the, the yes. crescent city cargo and all that from Get those those are those are very nice I, I would have to say crescent city cargo and royals like those are two widely different spectrums uh go with royals if you're kind of just introducing yourself to games or introducing others to games if you're wanting to go quite a bit heavier 
Crescent City Cargo. I wouldn't say they're much heavier. Um, they're very simplistic in terms of the rules. I think that, well, and and all those games, I think, would be, if we did top 30, top 40, those all would be on mine. Like, they were all thrown in. Yeah, well, that's what list. I'm saying. It's weird that me and you, even though we have wildly different tastes in other things, in our board gaming, we generally like we, the we, same We thing. line up. There are, And I think that would be an interesting list that we'd have to go back and forth on, on games that I like that you don't necessarily rank very high. The disparity. Yeah. Which is very interesting because on this Geek Group app, it does able to use the statistics to tell you the difference between the disparities, which reminds me, anybody who wants to be a part of like our people's choice and have your opinions and various other statistics brought out, on an upcoming episode, please join our Geek Group Guild on BGG or our Facebook group or just email me your Board Game Geek username and I'll add you in. Our Facebook group will be linked in the show notes. And the Geek Guild if you'd like BGG. Uh, I don't. I'll, I will attempt to put the guild in the show notes as well. Either way. Uh, well, that'll not, uh, that might be next episode or the episode after. It just depends. What? That will do the geek group analysis. Oh, our people's knows? choice. Who knows? If Bubba comes on, maybe we'll shame Bubba. Uh, Bubba. <laughs> the Bubba shaming episode. The Bubba shaming episode. Where have you been? BGG Spring, May 27th and all that. We'll be there. Be square. Also, if there's any games that you would like us to try out, send me an email. Remind us. See if there's some hidden send gem. Send us the money to buy that game. What's it? BGG. <laughs> We're going to rent it. Oh, we're that's what rent I'm talking it. about. Yeah, he's, oh, oh, we we just it. talked about. You go that. in the library and check it out. That's you what I meant. It. That's what you rent them well, out to rent. You pay money. No, you don't. You rent. Do. So, do you rent from the library? No, I go and get it. With no, my that's card. What, no, that's rent. That's what it means. Rent you pay for. I don't think so. Well, check it out in the dictionary. Webster's, the I, definitive I th- dictionary. Well, no, Webster's don't know what they're talking about. But rent can mean anything. It's it's it it can mean many different things. You rent it out from the library, right? Rent. Is just a, a, I mean, like, I know you pay rent. Rent. I guess I should have put rent definition. It's pulling up the musical, which I don't care for. A tenant's regular payment to a landlord. Verb. Pay pay someone for the use of something. We're not paying for anything. Although, I guess, technically, by means of BGG. BGG ain't free, bruh. So, I guess maybe we are renting that game. Because we're paying to go to BGG and therefore can check out the games that we want. If you want to go that route. Who knows? Either way, games that you'd like for us to play at BGG and give our opinion on. We'll try to cover the Enrique, hotness. sit down so you can say goodbye. Wait a minute, Enrique, where'd you go? Bathroom. <coughs> you should have just held it. Or nah, peed on yourself. You got incontinence. Yeah, put, 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 put on your headphones. Clear oh, your throat. <laughs> Sneeze. This is in. this is the greatest podcast <laughs> that we have ever done. Please send us an email, boardgamestoms at gmail.com. I am so glad this arbitrary, mundane, and stupid list is finally over our top 25. Maybe it won't take us two years to do this again. Three years, actually, wasn't it? I think times? three years is a good length amount of time because it's like... We don't play a Let's whole... Let's do a top 100 next time. We don't do a whole bunch of Let's new games. Let's do a top 100. Let's do a top... We'll, have, we'll stretch it out over the entire year. We'll there talk about go. one game <laughs> each each episode. Enrique... He's what popping a, his knuckles. Please. He was bumping his knuckles I'm together. done. This is Jerry. <laughs> this is Gabby. This is... Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Stay classy.